everyone, and welcome back to Shock Talk. Today we have a special guest with us, aside from my buddy Shane and Junior, who are always here. We have a special guest who uh, actually just came back from Baja, Stug Mittag. He's one of our sponsored racers, and we want to welcome him here today. Welcome. Welcome, Doug. Thanks, up, guys. Doug? Yeah. Thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me on here. It's the first time we've had a racer. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> very special for to have a racer on the show, especially one of them that has time to spend with us. We know everybody. Oh, he doesn't have like, the time, trust me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> his truck's running in the parking lot right now. He's like, I got to get out of here. Uh, no, no. Uh, like looking at his watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he paid someone to go fuel it. <laughs> exactly. Here, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I do have a little bit of time. We just got done with a 1,000, and uh, uh, I think we're done for the year for racing. Obviously, I got a bunch going of going at the business and stuff as far as like building cars and, and customer UTVs and stuff like that. But I think I'm off until uh, King of Hammers mm. beginning of next year, which, is, right. which isn't time far. to relax, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not far when you're uh, burning metal together every day. Exactly. That just kind of comes quick. Exactly, uh. exactly. I was just going to ask if you're doing King of the Hammers, so thank God. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. We're doing the desert challenge, the desert section of it. Um, and uh, same cars last year. Um, and we got second last year by like, I don't even know if it was a full minute. We were just a little bit off and kind of a mis mistake on our part as far as, like, keeping track of exactly where we were. I actually had a minute or two-minute lead going into the last lap, and I was like, well, as long as we keep this pace, sounds like we're good. But obviously the guy in second's getting the same information, so he stepped it up, and, and we didn't do that enough. So. Did you have, like, a problem with course deviation or just uh... – No, just – just uh, I should have pushed harder oh, okay. being the last lap, knowing yeah. that he's going to be charging. Right. You know, but you were the first to cross the finish line, but you were second in time. Right? In time, yeah. Oh, yeah. time ET, yeah. Yep. By less than a minute. They yeah, told they told me I won, and I was so excited. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that was like our first big desert race in the UTV. Yeah, and that's I'm what like, I was oh. going to say. Yeah, I was like, this is a huge race to win. And then he comes by, and they're like, oh, they got you. I think it was like 48 seconds or, oh, a minute man. or something. I'm like, oh. that's kind of really Especially and then he, that you could have just pushed it. Yeah, should have, could have, would have yeah, so much exactly. through my head. I was yeah. just like, oh, man, there's this section. This, and but, yeah. were, you, were you expecting to, to get that to get that good of a result? Yeah, uh, I mean, like we, we were able to pre-run and stuff, which is pretty cool. Usually state races, you're not allowed to pre-run. So we were able to, you know, go do a couple laps on the track and, and learn that. And I knew we had, like, a really good car and shocks were dialed and we had some new tires that we were trying out. And everything was kind of, like, lining up to be a good race. Um, but, you know, I was I was definitely like, still excited. Like, <laughs> no matter how prepared you are, like, it's a lot of stuff's got to go right to be, you know, up there at the end. Yeah, and, like, everybody, anybody who's anybody in, in UTV racing was at that race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. last like, year was a big, big class mm -hmm. as far yeah. as And that was the first time you did it, right? Right. Yep, exactly. And King of Hammers is, like, I mean, that's, like, 70,000 people, I think, they claim that show up there. And that's just people that buy wristbands, let alone the people that don't and go yeah. around and stuff. So it's a huge venue, and... It was cool to, to get up on the podium for Was it. that the first time on that chassis, too? Or had you shaken um, it down somewhere else? I, I we, we did one other race before that. Uh, we had a fuel cell issue. Oh. Um, but that, that was, was like our DP4, first. Right? No, that was uh, California 300. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We made one lap, and the, the the fuel cell was actually splitting apart at the seams. I'm like, oh, we should probably. <laughs> yeah. It's mounted right yeah. in between <laughs> us. And I'm like, yeah. maybe just. Call That's it. not a good idea. Let's yeah. just stop right here. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like being covered in gas right next yeah. to an engine with spark plugs in it, yeah. right? <laughs> but uh, that race, we had no testing on the car. We literally showed up, race that happened. So we were able to actually go testing and stuff. And that was our first like big race with the car. So that was cool to, nice. to perform with it. So was this your second year in Baja or your first year in Baja with the uh, with the car? First year in Baja, right. um, the five we did the five hundred and the thousand, um, both this, races, both races, yeah. Yep. yep. So fun. Uh, pre running down there is insane. Like just fun, good times. You know, I, I bring my good buddy uh, Joe Clark. My brother rides with me, and then our other buddy Matt. So we go down there for three or four days before the race starts and pre run and check everything, eat tacos out. and have exactly. A good time. And, it's like like everybody else says, you know, but <clears throat> this is my first time this year doing it, but like everybody else says, it's the, probably the best part about racing down there is pre-running. Yeah. yeah, I don't think people understand how grueling that, that race is, aside from the fact that you're in a car for 24 hours straight, right? But how really hard the track is on the race car. I mean, what's that like at speed? Most of the time, I mean, you're spending probably three or four hours at a time, 60 miles an hour plus in the car. Does it does it wear you out? I mean... Yeah, uh, I think the toughest part for me <clears throat> transitioning from, like, a short course to desert is, like, 
short course is like 15 minute adrenaline rush the whole right. time as fast as you can go no mistakes got to be perfect uh deserts obviously spread out a lot longer so i mean <clears throat> both the 500 and the thousand were long days for us um for me in the car the thou and i wasn't even driving the whole race you know right. i was in the car for i think uh about 10 hours at the 500 and about 12 hours at the thousand. So you're in those things for a while. A long and day. There's a lot of stops, you know, fuel and, and you have little issues here and there, but getting to the finish is just like, you know, half the battle or right. more in, in those races. So we were able to do that in both the races and, and finish. And so it was, it was a, it was a good learning year for Baja for us with the new car and everything. I think next year we'll be more focused on some podium finishes. And in, in so the, you, you basically, Running this race, you said for for your learning capabilities, you know what you need to change on the car and things that you want to do different or better next year. Yep. So you come back a little bit stronger, more competitive next exactly. year. Exactly. And like that was our biggest goal. Like both races we went to were like we're finishing this race. Exactly. You know, uh, like uh, that's Baja, our goal. Baja's not as predictable as short course, right? Right. So, so right. the track gets chewed up in short course, but it's pretty consistent, right? right. You know, your next lap is going to be a little more chewed up and a little more chewed up and a little more chewed up. But in Baja, I mean, it kind of is. Depending on who you're trail, who 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 you're behind, yeah, right? like there's so many unknowns, terrain, and it's yeah. like there, it's it's really difficult. In my, in, from my point of view, it'd be difficult to know exactly what needs to be changed because it's depends on what's out there. The track right? changes, so yeah. yeah, it's not a perfectly groomed track. Right. It's not watered for you. There's dust. Yes, you know, like if you're stuck behind a class that's in front of you, well, oh well, like. Right. Find a way around them, otherwise your time's going to be, you right. know, affected by right. it. Which so. you didn't tune for, right? right. So, so yeah. there's, there's, or you didn't plan for. So yeah, many, yeah. There, Baja's just a different animal, yep. and there's so much unexpected out there. Right? Yeah, speaking it's, of, it's crazy. Uh, at the thousand, um, you know, I've heard about you know there being like cows, you know, in yeah. the way and stuff like that for people. So I've always had it in the back of my mind, and I've seen <laughs> some bad wrecks from it. Yeah, but uh, towards the end, we we lost front drive, and we're kind of cruising. Luckily. And uh, it just rained towards uh, like Ojos, like by Ensenada. And there was like all the whoop sections were filled with water. And so there was cows like drinking out of the middle of the track. So <laughs> oh, we'd come nice. around bushes. It's really tight there and whoops and back and forth. So you're doing, you know, 40 miles an hour and you come around the corner and there's a herd of cows and it's nowhere you can go. Like the whole right. track's filled with them. So slamming on the brakes. Luckily, we're at a lower speed. We're able to slow down. It's happened three times. And one of the times, like we're usually when you get up to them, they kind of just like disperse, you know, they go, go their ways. Um, but there's one that we're, I think it was the, the second set of cows. We came up to them and the one turned around and started chasing us. Like, like <laughs> coming, coming at us almost at the front of the car. We had to swerve into the bushes. I'm like, what the hell is wrong? That, wasn't your, that, guy? Wasn't that guy was a little cow. angry. <laughs> like I slowed down for him. That like, wasn't your standard cow. <laughs> He'd seen no. a couple like, hundred race cars at that point. He's had enough. He's, He's like, like forget this. Me tonight. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'm not going to be your car. Yeah, no tonight. tacos. <laughs> I'm not going to be a taco. <laughs> He yeah, knew you so had too many tacos. There's, there's so much in Baja that's unexpected, right? Like, like it, it, it's really difficult to build a perfect car for Baja, mm -hmm. right? Unless you have like a 6100 truck or a trophy truck that has 36 inches of wheel travel. Mm -hmm. And even to them, there's some sections that's pretty challenging, right? There's so some pretty hard stuff. I don't know how a trophy truck gets through. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right? At, yeah. At, you know, it's it's these trucks do 145 miles an hour down the flat, so... Momentum speed gets them through a lot of stuff. Um, now there's what, like there's four there's there's all wheel drive trophy trucks now. So it's like those guys are insane. Yeah, but but you know you hear a lot of guys like I'm tuning for the thousand. I'm doing this for the thousand. Yeah, yeah. We're, you're 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 basically giving it your best effort because you never know what you're gonna. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, that's like the biggest thing that I'm missing out on right now is all the years of experience of racing in Baja, <laughs> let alone you know desert. Like you know I've got a year under my belt now of of you know desert racing um but baja is like the experience you can't pay for you know what i mean so yeah. uh luckily we had a couple guys on our team kyle Aaronsberg uh with vision canopies that's raced down there before so getting information from him and and uh one of his buddies ricky johnson was uh he's raced the baja 1013 or so times so like building the car and prepping the car it's like we're like what do we what do you guys want on the car like what do we need yeah. and they're like we got a shovel on there. Yeah. We got a knife. We got, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what are we getting into? And then, uh, <laughs> you know, like spare parts, like we got an app. Like normally I wouldn't have a lot of spare parts. I, li I like the car really light. You know, I think that's why our cars do good. Um, and the more weight you put on them, the more stuff's going to break. But the thousand, 
We're, we did 1,300 miles. It's like you got to finish the thing. So right. like, we have spare axle on there. Thank God we did because we broke one and we had to get out of there. So we fixed that. We had a spare hub. Uh, just like all this extra stuff, spare radius rods, spare. There's so much spares that we put on the Consumables. car. Consumables. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. we, you know, you're in a place where a chase truck can't get to you right. for, for hours. hours. It's like. Better, yeah, you. better have it in the tool. A little box. bit more yeah. weight. We yeah. might our pace is going to be a little slower, and and uh, that's like the hardest part. Also, I think for desert racing is judging pace. You know, what I mean, like you kind of got to go off of miles and like experience. Like now, I know I've done the Mint four hundred a couple times now, so it's like okay, like I know like the pace. I think for a four hundred mile race, I know the pace for a two hundred mile race, and now like I know the pace for a thousand. And they keep getting bigger. Like UTVs right. are insane what they're doing now. So that gate, you gauge how long the car is going to live at that pace. Exactly, exactly, and that's what you got as a driver. You got to know like when to push, when to not push. Uh-huh. Uh, I think Hager, uh, he won our class, and he beat all the class ten cars this year in the thousand, wow. which is insane. I yeah. was just going to mention that. Yeah, they uh, side by sides finally through it. Yeah, I wouldn't say finally. If it's been like this last year, they've been duking it out with class tens, which yeah. are just kind of crazy. crazy. Uh, yeah, they, those, they're, they're, those, are, those are big shock buggies, man. Those yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. They got bypass yeah, assists yeah. on them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And we're all single shock around, you know, all four corners. And so. Are you like guys all single shock? I thought um, the there, Matlocks were running a bypass. Yeah, in yeah somebody else. Yep. Matlocks, I think, have bypasses on, on the back of their car and some external bump stops and stuff like that. But most of the people in the class are keeping it um, original with the single yeah. shock. Yeah, that's because they... St- they shoved Pro R into Unlimited class. Mm-hmm. That's been around right. forever. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's but what, nobody raced it, really. Yeah. And that's what, like, we're, like, as a chassis builder, I'm kind of struggling with right now is, like, you know, like, I have customers that want to go that route and stuff, and it's, like, it's cool. Like, I get it. Like, we can do it. Like, our cars are light enough to where we can put them on there, and it's not going to be a huge disadvantage compared to most other cars. It's going to be probably an advantage, you know, but... It's like, where's the class going to go? Like, yeah. if all of a sudden next year they're like, hey, like we're we're taking all these turbo rules because they have a lot more rules. They have, you know, single shocks a rule. You can't do big motors adjustments. And we're going to like apply this because the Pro R class is big enough now to where it's not f- completely unlimited. And then right. all of a sudden I got all these cars that I built that are built for bypasses or have turbos. Like you could put a turbo on a four-cylinder right now and have 600 horsepower in our Whoa. class. <laughs> but it's like, do we really want to like, go down that road you know or uh, should, are we but keeping it, it affordable yeah. well, so that, that's a good call let's up. get back that's let's talk question. about the shock for a second yeah so. I want, I, from, from your perspective I, i'm sure you've driven a lot of side by sides probably running, since you were a kid right run, yeah. running our <laughs> running our black hawk utv shock you're the only one out in the desert that's running that shock mm-hmm. so does it do you feel like it needs it do, do you feel like there's a limitation to that shock absorber where a bypass or an external bump stop or anything like that would be a bonus. I think that's what's good about the Blackhawk is there's so much controlling. Like you have, you know, the dual stage bump stop at the top, you have the rebound control and it's all, you know, adjustable externally as well as internally with the valving and stuff like that, that I don't think you need it. Like personally, I wouldn't do it. I would hold off you know, obviously a bypass shock is a bypass shock. Like oh. there's so much external adjustment you can do with it and bump zones and controlling all that stuff. But right now I don't think we're held up by our shocks at all. I think that mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it. I think it would be a weight disadvantage by putting them on. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, adjustability, like, I mean, it's a bypass shock. Like you said, like there's control zones that you can adjust and, and stuff. So there's advantages on that part of it, but. But it's, a, you overall. have the same type of features in the Blackhawk. Exactly. So let's right. talk about the features. So the Blackhawk is a position sensitive uh, UTV damper and it's like a bypass, which a bypass is position sensitive also. Yep. And um, so it offers a lot of the same features yep. that a bypass. And would. that's, that's like my biggest, that's why I like it so much. Cause most of the UTV rules, you cannot have a bypass on it. And so that shock gives you that similarity of a bypass shock and yeah. eliminates the need for another damper in the system right exactly. because you'd have to have a coil carrier if you're running exactly. bypass damper now you double the weight and the price i mean right. that's the that's the bummer part to me when i see these people putting bypass shocks on it's like okay well now if everybody thinks that's the way to go everybody's gonna start spending an extra 10 grand on their car per something else that's to just, break just the shocks yeah. let alone like the modifications fabrication wise that mm-hmm. you have to do or pay something oh, yeah. to do and, and i feel like with, having to for the cage to handle exactly. like and then and then i feel like with utv though like since it's since there are factory teams there's professional drivers like doug mctag here like with 
like kind of desert racing's kind of been the same for a long time. But with the UTV, there's a lot more money being thrown at it because you got factory teams. So I think having a single shock and making it work is like we've thrown a lot of technology out there that's not available in any other desert racing shock, right? Right. And we've developed something that's kind of like the next level with with a single shock, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's I think it goes along with UTV. There there's a lot of time money being spent in UTV professionally, and then to go back to like what's been done for years, right? It kind of doesn't. It seems like you're going backwards. Go yeah. Yep. Exactly. And for like Polaris, they they don't sell cars with eight shocks on them. They sell no. like four. You know. Right. So if you're promoting that, it's just I think it just needs to stay four shocks personally. But you know. Well, see I, where it goes. I think I want to jump backwards a little bit. We got into Blackhawk before we got to hear about Doug's actually how he got into off road racing and and what he does besides race. So what what got you into off road off road racing and when? Yeah. Um. So my dad's always been into it. Uh, he's built off road chassis since he was like 15 years old. Um, Chad Matag. He uh, he taught me everything I know. Uh, but basically, he you know he always was around it. He built cars and he actually got one of the first Polaris uh, factory deals way back. Um, he actually raced himself, um, and he was with a company called uh, uh, Rhino Mafia. It's when the Rhinos came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys remember when the Rhinos oh, yeah. 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 Yep. So those came out, and they built long travel kits for him, cages. They went and did the, um, you know, the challenges, and then they, there's, like, a series that started where it was all motocross tracks, where it was all, like, huge booters and stuff for these – rhinos that did 45 miles an hour 50 miles an hour <laughs> but back in the day it was huge and then you know uh it progressed where they got a, a polaris deal because they did well in the yamahas and so then they got a polaris deal and um i got my first car when i was 14 for christmas my dad got me uh they got a good deal on a car and got me a car and just kind of like uh you know got a long travel kit for it and i always went to the shop with my dad and worked and stuff like that um and then you know kind of had some support through that you know raced those until uh see, 20 2018 no 2018 i don't know somewhere I, around yeah, yeah somewhere around there it's all kind of a blur but what in series? the beginning what series I, you well the utv was called m4sx um i actually won my first championship it was an m4sx uh, mod mm -hmm. amateur class it was like the amateur class and I won the championship in and I was like, Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Right? This is it. Like, and the rest is a blur, but you know, I, I, uh, I definitely owe a lot to my, my parents and my family. Like they, they brought me into the racing world and like, I mean, it was tough in the beginning, like where they wouldn't pay their mortgage so we can go racing and, and stuff like that. And then, typical uh, racer family. Yep. Yeah. And my dad actually broke away from that company and kind of started doing his own thing. And we were prepping multiple other race cars out of our garage and, and uh, making it all happen and, you know, just catching breaks and, and then, you know, getting sponsors and doing well enough to, you know, to, to get sponsors and get support and just slowly work my way up. And before I knew it, I was in pro four, you know what I mean? Long story short. And it's like, that's the, the pinnacle of short course racing, racing against, you know, uh, rest in peace, Kyle LaDuke and, and all those, you know, legends like that. It's like humbling, like where yeah. we started, you know what I mean? And, and then, we, I got it. We have a, we had a deal for a long time going to Indonesia. I, we did it for like three or four years, where we were actually working for this uh, super generous guy from Indonesia, a uh, rich coal mining guy that that uh, was super into racing. We built 15, 18 cars for him over there overseas in his wow. own shop that we helped set up. And um, you know, my buddy uh, he actually runs your guys' shock on his on his drag racing stuff, but race from KT kind of got that whole thing going and. He became a huge sponsor. He's who helped get me into a Pro 4. Like, he literally bought Kyle Duke's Pro 4 from him right after he won the championship in the pits, walked over to him and said, I want to buy your car, <laughs> bought it for me. <laughs> and I was able to race, you know, for the next year, and I had great success in that truck and stuff. But just kind of things just, you know, working up from, from, where, from where it started, and it wasn't much. Like I said, I mean, barely not paying the bills and, and going racing, and, and now we're here. Awesome. So not only a pro racer, but you're also a chassis builder as well. Yeah, yeah. So now, um, you know, like I said, we've built tons of short course trucks with my dad, um, custom off-road design. Like, we've built tons of winning short course trucks, pro lights, pro twos, um, even a pro four. Uh, but, you know, UTV stuff, long travel kits, I've always just, you know, worked with my dad and learned from him and stuff like that. And this UTV thing, uh, as soon as the... 
Pro R came out, players dropped that platform, and I was like, I want to, I want to race one. So I built one for myself, and you know, um, doing R and D with you guys with with the Blackhawk and stuff like that. A lot of interest that I got from uh, just customers and stuff like that, wanting the same chassis. So here I am. I'm on car number six. I have nine sold now. Kind of um, doing my own thing. You know, obviously a lot of inspiration from my dad's builds and stuff like that. But kind of my own design and and uh, taking the wheel as far as uh, fabricating and, and building all these cars and, and starting my own company. And it's winning races. Yeah. yeah. Not, not only yeah. is it winning races, but man, the the traction you have from all these other big names in racing. You know what I mean? Like I'll see a post get reposted by like Race Desert, and then you you read the comments, and it's like. You never see a mid tag car out there, and someone doesn't mention like that's the baddest car on the planet right now. You know what I mean? So that's got to feel real good. Yeah, no, it's it, a lot of hard work. It's a lot of late nights, early mornings, and yep. So when you see comments like like, I mean, I haven't seen one post yet that someone doesn't say that's the baddest pro R out there. Yeah, you know what no, I mean. I, it's been super humbling. Like it, I, uh, I like I said, as soon as they dropped the platform pro R. RJ Anderson did a, a video of him like jumping it through um, the streets of LA and stuff like that, or I don't know where it was, but um, I was like, I want one of those cars, you know, like that's next level UTV, like I gotta get one. So I put one on order and I literally didn't get it for months, and uh, I just literally shower thoughts of like how I'm gonna design this thing and how it's gonna look good and stuff, and putting it all together, and then it hit the internet and everybody loves it, you know, I, the the visuals of it, how it works and. I think we're kind of setting trends for, you know, 100%. The new I mean, it's, the new world. When that thing's out there on 35s and it's really low and wide. I mean, mm-hmm. Pete, that's a sexy car. If Garrett yeah. could could scroll the camera over, it's actually our backdrop here in uh, in the podcast studio. So, <laughs> we we don't just have to talk about it. There it is. I mean, it's a beautiful car. We we love that photo so much that we we made it our uh, decorated wall here in the podcast studio. So, yep. super yep. easy for us to remember what the car looks like and and you don't, you know, the nice thing is whether wh- wherever you go with that thing, whether you're at a Jeep event, whether you're showing it, like every, it, it draws a crowd. Yep. Right. I remember when I helped push that thing off a trailer at Off-Road Expo. Off-Road Expo. The thing wasn't, I mean, it wasn't running yet or didn't have brakes on it or something. And, yep. I, and I almost ran myself over. It was, with a, it. It was a Flintstone machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> Pushing with your, yeah, feet. your feet down. Like I, I came out a few times from the booth and it was like, people were surrounding this car. Mm-hmm. That's the first time I saw it on uh, it's on just pictures. It really I was like, is. What badass is looking? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, we sponsored a yeah. UTV. I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and plus that's uh, the most badass UTV I've ever seen. I Meaning you see it running, it's just amazing. <laughs> and, and the and the and the thing is, I think it's going to be a you know how you get the guys that not necessarily copycat, but they take cues and ideas from other builders, and and then I just think it's going to be a long time before someone can match. Not, I mean. Not only integrity, but aesthetically. You you kept a, a lot of the aesthetics in mind when you were putting this thing together. Yep. And, that, and it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the hardest parts, I think, about building a car is, like, your, your performance is number one, obviously. That's everybody's number one. Mostly. Safety. Safety. Yeah, yeah. safety, performance, yeah. performance strong, light. And that's what, like, bringing from short course to desert, I think, what I bring to the table is, is we're all, like, short course is all about as simple as possible light as possible and strong as possible so you're like every tube's got to matter you know mm-hmm. you're not putting a tube in there just because or because right. it like holds a bracket the right, right. way or whatever right. it's structurally it's got to work and then it's also got to you know serve the, multiple purposes multiple, multiple purposes so right. the car has like a lot of triangulation it's it's about 400 pounds lighter than the the competitor chassis builders um so Whoa. it's that's so like it, pushing me off the car. <laughs> <laughs> you just got rid of Junior. Exactly. Took him out of the passenger seat. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Doug? Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> but, um, you know, like that's, and then also, you know, make it look good to make yeah, it still aesthetics like. Aesthetics is a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, it really you know, is. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of chassis builders that have forgot that. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're, they're. They overthink the integrity of the, of the chassis, overthink, overthink the safety, and they lose touch with, hey, Someone's spending a lot of money for this thing, and they want it to look good. Yep. And I think that's where you hit it, man. Yeah. You nailed it because nobody can test the integrity by looking at the vehicle, but they know that fucking thing's beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? When it's on thirty fives and, and on the hostile wheels, and it's just sitting out there, it's just. Yep. You know, and all the comments, man, how fast that thing looks sitting still. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I appreciate it. Like all the love I've gotten from it is insane. Oh yeah. I mean. And that, and the way that you, your team. 
our team has got that thing functioning. Like you got heavy, you got heavy hitters in this, in, 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 in the race scene that are commenting like that thing is like, Oh yeah, I know. Like, uh, the first race I did with it, uh, California 300, uh, Rob Mack walked up and he's like, dude, I saw this thing at the off-road expo where you're talking about walking out and, and seeing a bunch of people surrounding it. Like, he's like, I sat and looked at this thing for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, really? good job. I'm like, dang, well, from well, him? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, that means something. Nathan got a high five from Robbie. Yeah. And he said, that's exactly what my, um, expectation that's my expectation of a utv that's that's yeah. where my threshold is that's what i need it to be yeah you yeah. know yeah and then sure. you see that thing operate in plaster city yeah wide, wide open yeah through like, big stuff through or, big yeah. like or, that's that that was like right by the tower where everyone tunes and that's 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 trophy truck yeah no for sure and that's what like i've seen so many people i was my first time at plaster city i've never tested there before and I always see everybody do that video. I'm like, I gotta go do that video. Yeah, see what our yeah, see what our car looks like. Nathan, that's that's Nathan, look said, Nathan said he wanted to do that at like 80, and yeah. I was like skeptical. And <laughs> and and he sent me this video. Nathan sent me this video, and it, right as you hit that area, he's like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> it's taking it. Yeah, yeah. No, Dude, it's I mean, it's amazing. The, make... the shocks are like unbelievable. That's why like it's hard. Like I can't wait to. Till they start getting on other people's cars, they're gonna be blown away. Yeah. Like I have driven a lot of UTVs, a lot of different manufacturers, and all that stuff, and it's like incredible what I can get away with in this car. And it's and and that's that that's not just you. I mean, you've gotten a, you've turned a lot of guys onto the shock, right? Mm -hmm. So you got um, Shannon mm -hmm. that's running them. Yep. Like we were yeah, at not the, even my chassis, and right. he's, he's blown away by how right. it and he's used every other every manufacturer. Yep. Like so, he was at the at the Sands Sandsport show, and we were hanging out. And he, he, Shannon, if you're listening, you owe me a steak still, buddy. <laughs> right? I'm just saying, but he was blown away where he, where you talked him into getting these shocks, and he was at his wits end with the manufacturer he was using. His boys had rolled two UTVs, and he kind of blamed it on the shocks. Yep. That they kind of hydroed in the back, and he just they both both his boys went over in the same UTV, and he says he can't get these things, he can't punish these things. He says they're just, and his son, I think he's like nineteen or twenty years old, and he's like it's like driving another vehicle. It's it's seriously incredible, it's crazy with the bump zone. Like it's just like there's so much adjustment with the shock. It's now, now, honestly, if you could put a bench seat in one, I'd love to witness this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you can build one with a bench seat, I'm in there. <laughs> By the way, um, Cruiser Bob, the one you gave a ride yep. to, he yeah. said to say hi to you. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Cool. he always comments. We horseshoot his ass in that car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Remember, yeah. Oh, baby, just so, him, just so that you are kids crotch. Oh yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I had to remember. <laughs> no one. I mean, Cruiser Bob was in there like this. Yeah. So and, and we're like, like he's like, like I'm getting in no matter what. I, I yeah. told I told Bob I'm like, hey dude, do you need help? He's like, no, I got this. And then he tried to reach down into his crotch to do the crotch strap. He's like, oh. Junior's like, I'll yeah. do it, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it, bro. Let me I got help you. you with that. I got you. Oh, he, was, so, he was already your idol because of what did he have? A, a seventy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Series. You know, right hand. Drive. Just so everybody <laughs> knows, uh, we invited um, Doug to our Easter Jeep Safari uh, event, and we had him running. Hot laps in the wa in the sand wash, and he was kicking <laughs> that up. That thing was so. Crazy. I mean, I, I don't know if that's yeah. where that picture was at, but he no, was this making is... some killer roosts, and and one of our guides said, "I got to ride in that car." Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, he he wanted to ride. I'm like, dude, I'm putting you in this. Car. We pried him in. <laughs> we yeah. dude, that was horseshit. And I, what do you think was harder, Doug, getting him in or out? <laughs> uh probably probably out. I would say out was harder because he did. He, he you were so patient. Going. He yeah. wanted to keep going. Yeah, you were so patient. <laughs> yeah. You were so patient. You were just sitting there oh, watching me. I love on Boltus crotch strap. That was classic, man. I love uh, giving people rides and yeah, stuff. That was a great moment, man. That was a great moment. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is an, another thing just about what I know about you personally is there's a lot of guys that get into your situation where you're, you know, you're a known racer. People know who you are. People building success, right? You yeah. build success for yourself and then you turn into a different person. Right. And me and Bob had this conversation the other day and he's like, He's like, dude, you would never know this guy was even a racer if you just talked to him. You know what I mean? So you've always kept yourself really, really humble from the time I've known you. And that's pretty rewarding, I think, in the way you were brought up. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, they get, and I think, you know, some of the people I'm talking about, they get a little hot for their head. Man. Yeah. 
you know, and it's always good to stay humble, stay helpful, stay, you know, communicative to people that are just, you know, you give people time of day. You know what I'm I saying? I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, I just look at it as like it's, it's you know, it's what I grew up doing. And, and uh, I, you know, I'm not going to be cocky or think I know more than the person next to me. I'd rather learn than. Yeah, then absolutely. Think I know and it, that shows, dude. Yeah, man. That shows because you, super you're, 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 every conversation I've had with you, you just absorb, 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 and you, you just don't. It's 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 pretty humbling from from a guy that's races professionally. You know, I've talked to many. I've been in this business twenty five years, so I've talked to many professional racers that, quite honestly, they think their shit don't stink, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've never won a race in their life. They just show up and they their shit don't stink. But it's really it's really nice to have a guy part of the Bill Stein family that's as humble, humbling as you are. And, right. and I, I remember some of the people from the Mr. Jeep Safari event, everybody repeated that same comment that it was just really fun to have someone to hang out with like you that wasn't too full of themselves, right? And yeah. I mean, we're all a bit cocky when it comes to things that we do because we do it, right? Or prideful but, in it. Yeah, exactly. But everybody was the same uh, as Junior's opinion was we really enjoyed having you there. And we enjoy working with you. And that goes out for all the people that were yeah, at that event. Yeah. Now, that event was solid because of how humble everyone was. Yeah. Like you yeah. and Cade Rod just sending it over yeah. that sand burn. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. It was just like, and, and like you made great friends. Yeah. yeah. It, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, like yeah. everyone that we involve ourselves with at Bill Stein, I feel has that humble, you know, personality, right? Like, like, like. Everyone that was there was just great to be around. No, yeah, even like everybody that works, like every, like all you guys, like I've, I've created a family. Like now, I, I like know everybody that works at Bill yeah. Stein by that event, you know, and yeah. and like hearing everybody's history, how long you guys have been, you know, in this, in this, with this company, and and uh, the the you know relationships that you guys build with like me or say or anybody, like you don't have to, but you know we, I mean we text like yeah. for fun, like joking, yeah. Like, yeah. It's awesome. I, that's why I love working with you guys. I mean, we're here doing a podcast with people that design yeah. and build shocks and R and D, and like you guys are a big part of Bill Stein, and you're able to hear, talk to me about it, and yeah. and uh, I think it's huge. And I think we're all. What helps is that we're all passionate about the same outcome. Yep. Right. So we want you to succeed, and we need all of this to do it right. Right. Like, like it, it, you were the. Basically, the test dummy for UTV. Exactly. <laughs> right? Here's some shocks, Doug. Go yeah. like, yeah. like if we're being honest, we threw Can Am shocks at you and said, "Modify them and make them work." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, you basically almost by 48 seconds could have won that race on Can Am shocks. At yep. Yeah. No. And and I mean, your guys' support system, like everything's awesome. I love it. And. Going and doing that event was such a good idea. I think what Chelsea come up with that. Yeah, yeah, right. she did. Yeah. That was awesome. Like, and, and I wish cool, like I've never done anything like that with any of my other sponsors. Yeah, like, that was so cool. Yeah. And an integral part of this, I wish he was here, but he's out tuning at Parker. Yeah, we, Nathan. Nathan, oh, we, we tried to get him here, but he's, yeah, I mean, he's busy at work while we goof off here and he, talk to Doug. He, so. He's an integral part that, of this. Yeah, that guy. I, I can't even say enough about. That guy's drive. He's to so make committed. It work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've never I mean, seen anyone so committed to getting the task done and yep. and taking care of whoever it is that he's working with and just to the not, nth degree. Where like literally, I've seen the guy walk out of the building and jump into a vehicle and say, "If I have to pay for it, I have to pay for yeah, it. I'm going to go make this too. thing work." Yep. Yeah. Oh, that that right there describes Nathan. Like, yeah. You know, care as long as it's done right and and it happens for. I mean, he's taking care of me so much. Like, he'll come and help put the shocks on the car. He'll help me finish the car so we can make a test date on time. Like, right. The guy is, like, top-notch. Like, yeah. you know, like, the support and stuff is insane. Steve, Steve, and I, Steve and I interviewed him together, and Steve had another meeting to go to after about 30, 45 minutes in the interview, and he says, finish it up for me. So it ended up being like a three hour interview. I walked him around and it's like we had known each other for 30 years. Dude. <laughs> yep. The guy just has so much knowledge, so much to offer. Yeah. And, and, and he's not, what's the right word I'm looking for? Well, he's, he's got that, he's, he's got that well. same. Humility. He's very humble. Yeah. He's very humble. Don't yeah. piss him off though. Don't yeah. piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> but he's very humble. But he also, what the word I'm looking for is he's a lot of guys that have his, amount of knowledge mm -hmm. 
are cocky and they 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 don't want to share it. Right, unapproachable. Yeah, Nathan, like if we were out tuning and a guy pulled up in a car with a set of kings on it, he'd help him turn tubes, dude. He just he's just that yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, he wants people to succeed, and whatever he has to offer to make that happen, he's gonna offer it. Yeah. Dude. And he goes above and beyond. And I, I, I truly wish he was here. Yeah, now, we just too. have to figure out a way to clone him and sell him with every shot. I know. Package. Don't lose that yeah, guy. Exactly. That is. He's, he's, he's by far the most integral part of this program. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no. as far as... Uh, For the I, don't know, I don't even know where I'd yeah. be right now without yeah. all of his help. You know, yeah. right. even yeah, like my UCB racing program in general. Like yeah. He's been a huge part. He, he jumped in. He flew to La Paz and chased the whole race. Yeah. Like... Without even batting an eye, I was like, "Hey, I was like, hey, you want to come down? Like, we'll figure it out." He's like, "He's like, yeah, I already talked to Kyle. I'm flying in. I'm gonna drive one of his chase trucks all the way back down and make sure cars." <laughs> he did the chased whole way. for like, thirty hours, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, dude, you're nuts. But I was texting not his him. First time. Like, no, he's, no, no. He's been he's, doing he's desert racing. Yeah. Racer, yeah. yeah, like you said, he's yeah. got yeah. so much knowledge in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he I looks to him for more than just shock knowledge. Right. right. You know, <laughs> that's crazy because he's so. And you. He's like you in a way, like where, where you would talk to this guy at a bar having a beer and you would n there would never be the assumption there that this guy's ever raced in his life. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because he doesn't hold himself at that, at some pinnacle. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? When to me, him and Doug, not Doug, well, you two, but D Doug Simmons, yep. they're pinnacle to me, man. Mm -hmm. These guys have more knowledge than some, between the two, I think between me, Doug, and Nathan, as a whole, working that, and Shane, and and this guy, and I, Mike. I forgot a bunch of shit. So. Yeah, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm yeah. saying on the on the race <laughs> side, the sales side, I think that me, Shane, or me, Doug, and Nathan, that, that basically run that side of the operation, have probably more knowledge than some complete race teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. And that's what wins you races know? And, and gets things done. Now, if we could clone... Like one of each of us, and throw him out there. I think that'd be great. Well, I was but, thinking we should clone him, and, and he should come in the box with a set of Blackhawks. In this yeah, thing. Nathan. <laughs> you know, Nathan just, just pops out. I know. That's. <laughs> I gotta. Well, we definitely gotta get some clones of him because every every Blackhawks set of shocks that I sell, I'm like, oh yeah, Nathan, I'll go testing with you. And I'm like, God, that poor guy is yeah. so damn busy. Yeah. Already. Dude, yeah. he's so. I texted warm. him on the way here. I'm like, hey, you gonna be there today? He's like, no. He gave me, I don't know, he texted me. I have a list of what he just said. I'm like, holy crap, you didn't, you didn't see <laughs> this. He's, he's, like, Par he's in Parker right yeah, now, right? Yeah, he was in with, Parker. With Schultz. He was with Deegan testing uh -huh. in Lucerne. Then he went to Parker with Schultz. And then he's headed to... Uh, Rage. Rage at the River. Yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> slow down. Not on vacation. <laughs> and all without a bump. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all, just, that's all always, natural energy. Yeah, yeah. He always comes back smiling, yeah. Yep. just... And you know it's it's so crazy because a guy with that amount of talent, just like he just likes to fly under the radar, dude. Yeah, he just likes to fly under the radar. Yep. Like he, people aren't. I don't think people are aware how much his involvement has got you to where you're at mm -hmm. on the UTV side of things. Even on the short course, like he's out there turning tubes and yep. making valving changes and doing this yep. and. And he has an expert eye for it. You know, yeah. it's like. Yeah. No, he's a huge part of yeah. Bill Stein, I would say, for sure. Yeah. I've so before we went on today, we, we talked, kind of talked about this year's King of the Hammer and maybe some things that um, you might be doing different or some new things that you're getting into. So can you elaborate on anything that you might be doing in the future that might be cool people want to hear about? Yeah. So uh, I'm still trying to, like, lock down my uh, schedule for next year because there's so many tough part right now for desert racing is there's so many series you know and each one kind of has it's like can't do it it's all golden egg race <laughs> yeah you know? exactly so i don't know if i'll necessarily do a whole series but maybe like hand pick all the big races it seems mm -hmm. like you know that's kind of like what mo majority of my sponsors want anyways so i i know we're gonna do king of hammers that's a no-brainer for me mm -hmm. i mean even if i didn't have a sponsor i'm going to king of hammers mm -hmm. and we look <laughs> forward to I'm seeing hooked. you there yep yeah. yep um uh so we're gonna go do king of hammers um and then after that, I think would be the Mint 400, which is March, mm -hmm. uh, first weekend of March. 
I get married the weekend after that. Ooh, so. lucky you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the wife doesn't kill me because yeah. I'm busy working on the race car before the before Exactly. The Sorry, no it. honeymoon. I'm going to go racing. I'll probably do the Mint 400 just because we've done it a couple times. It's, you know, it's a loop race. It's, it's a Mint huge 400, race. You know, yeah. A big race. Big um, coverage, yep. A lot of coverage. Um, so I don't know. I think uh, after that, I kind of don't have anything set in stone. I really want to do the Parker, or not Parker. Uh, that's over already by then. Um San Felipe 250, I think, would be a cool that's one. Yeah, yep. that's a good one. Short enough to where it's not a crazy budget for that race. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a high speed. I'm all about, you know, I come from short course. So yeah, I like, as I like, fast as I can go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that means I can drive the car harder. So the 250, um, possibly the 500 and the 1,000. So we'll, we'll kind of see where that goes. Um, I don't know for sure. I'd like to do Vegas to Reno. Um, I'm, I'm looking to do about six races, I think, next year. Good, nice. Right. Yeah, next year. Seems like the UTV is as far as the pro pro racers, they they pick those races. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like there's no series. Right. Really. So it's um, kinda it's bizarre. I do like the D P four series. It's more of a grassroots series, but it's like last time I think we went there, it, I think there was like eighty cars, I believe they told me, or something like that. It was like insane. Sixty That's or eighty lot. eighty cars, and I'm like, this is cool. And we lined up and it's a lot of cars. There's a lot of people that are, you know, like just getting started and there's fast people. Chris Blaze, uh, I got second. At that race, uh, Chris Blaze is no slouch when it comes to driving. He he uh, he schooled me, so <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, I want to go back for more. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I think that I think that uh, that series is really cool. You know, you get in in and out of there. You don't have to pay for pre running and stuff like that. You know, um, the there's one pit, so your your support team doesn't have to be massive, um, and you get to drive the car really hard. <laughs> That's what you like. That's what I, yeah, what I love. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that guy at KOH last year that came in the booth all mad at me? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he came he came in mad at me. He's like, oh, that's a real real good job on Bill Stein, huh? Just uh, sponsor the best driver out there to make your shocks look good. <laughs> <laughs> he was pissed. I, I saw it back. I was like, can you believe this, dude? I want to know who this guy is. I know. Yeah, he was, like he was literally pissed. pissed. Yeah, I like him already. Yeah. Yeah. Like him. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. really pissed off. Yeah, but we have a, a pretty decent history with Doug, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. But short, yeah, yeah. Short That's what I tried to tell him. I said, "Yeah, we've 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 had Doug in our in our family for quite a while." Yeah, now. Uh, immediately people think we're crazy. we they thought we were crazy at the time, but we uh, we started our um, so 2016, I think, is when I bought that truck and when I started my relationship with you guys. Actually, yeah. for sure it is. Um, and we bought Kyle LaDuke's championship winning truck i think he won two or three championships yeah. in a row like unstoppable ins- unstoppable yeah. <laughs> right he bu- i bought this you know just the scenario that uh my indonesian friend bought this truck for me we took it we got with you guys and immediately ripped the shocks off of it that just won three championships yeah. <laughs> 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 crazy. and everybody's like even kyle was a call, like messaged me is like are you crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know like we you know we were able to get the ch- truck working right away like Work and that's that's stuff. Simmons, Doug Simmons, man. Yeah, he exactly. Has, and he, that's when he's got a tune, master exactly, tune for yeah. those things. Exactly. And he got that thing dialed within one test session. Like we were like same pace as what we were with the, with the other shocks. Let, let's talk, Doug Simmons. As long as he likes you, yeah, yeah. you're in. Yeah. <laughs> so we got the same name, so we're kinda, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I, I'm glad he loves me. The two Dugs. Yeah. The two Dugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, you know, since then it's just been you know no looking back. Like the service that we've gotten from you guys and working with you guys and and uh, now becoming you know my biggest sponsor on my UTV and just like it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. So it's been a, a long time relationship. Um, yeah. I don't think everybody really understands because then not too many people are following the short course all the time, but they're watching the UTV stuff and especially with you know what happens with these cars when they get out in the track. Like they said, people roll it off the trailer and. They're like, wow, look at that. So I think that even though it's been a long time, I think more people are starting to notice, right? Yep. I think it's brought more popularity, if you will, to a lot of people that are racing these days as the side-by-side thing is allowing people that typically didn't pay any attention are now paying attention. Yeah, especially when they're passing class 10s. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so and so there's, there, a lot of guys... They think, might have that same car in their garage, yep. you know? A lot so. of guys think that guys coming out of short course that are going into the desert are fast. 
I, I've heard that. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're, a, you're yeah. cheating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Short yeah. course. That's yeah. another thing the guy said. Yeah, you, you get a short course racer out there and one like Doug Mittag and they're just going to make their shots look good, you sons of bitches. <laughs> like, that's what he said to me in the KOH I was like, oh, my God. But anyhow, like, like it, they, a lot of people say that guys that come from short course are always fast in the desert. I find that difficult to believe. You got probably got to hold back, right? I, yeah. I, I find it yeah. difficult to believe because it, it's a little. I mean, the terrain's completely different. You you know what you're up against at every turn in short course. You don't know what you're up against. So you think that's true, or do you guys think you guys just push harder? What I mean. Well, definite answer is qualifying. I would say 100 percent it helps because you're you know anybody in trophy truck that's qualifying or any sort of desert car that's qualifying it's usually five miles and you're driving it as hard as you can mm -hmm. so short course that you know every tenth of a second every corner everything matters mm -hmm. a lot and i think that's like a no-brainer that helps um you know obviously with the longer the race the more the short course stuff you know i would say is less you know um influential just because like your pace you do have to learn you know you have to slow down you have to not drive your car as hard as you can you have to drive it as hard as you can to make it 1300 miles right and knowing what that is is really hard because you know short course um you know it's always flat out and if the car breaks well either way we weren't going to win if you know if this thing was going to break so you know we you have to there's no option where desert it's like okay you can find that fine line of what parts can handle and stuff like that and the utvs are getting so much better but at first it was really bad you know like belts were breaking like you'd have to watch this temp gauge and just sit there and just drive it off of that or or you know like your wheel bearing's going to go out at 300 miles in you know so now they're getting so good that you can like bring that up but that's the hardest part i think the hardest transition for us right is short course racers but if you look bryce manzi's has short course history he's great in the desert rob mccachran obviously mm -hmm. um you know christopher polvorty is one of the newest that came straight from short course you know that's what he's done his whole life and look at how quick he is he just got in a four-wheel drive mason and was seconds off of Bryce Menzies you know what I mean like I think it I think it is a big advantage and just having that extra knowledge isn't going to hurt you for the most part right you know? yeah. and for me I grew up going to the desert just for fun like as a family like that's what we did every Christmas Thanksgiving New Year's like that's what we were is the desert so knowing the terrain is also very important you know what I mean growing up around the terrain and stuff like that I feel like helps me a lot um just washouts and wait, you know, blind hills. Like, you know, there's going Knowing what to look reading for. Exactly. Yeah. You're reading that the one, terrain. That one, that one blind hill got you, though. Which one? The 247-foot jump. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the problem is, yeah. <laughs> the problem for me is it looks bad on me because I saw what the backside of that looked like yeah. before I did yeah. that. But uh, talk about hucking it, boy. Yeah, man, <laughs> that was insane. Yeah, I, I still you're like look, I'm flying. I, I mean, you have video. Enough, you have enough just, time to think about what yeah. you're building in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had enough time to think about a lot of things. Did I leave there. the stove on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, no, like it was just a really long lip, and uh, my fiance was videoing it, and like she was like, "Do you want me to video?" I was like, "Ah, whatever." Like this is my. Fr I'm just gonna cruise. So I like, I don't even know what my, I'm gonna what, cruise. I didn't know what mile per hour it was, but the shape of the mountain was like this, and I'm just like, and it just drops out, and I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, eyes closed, just hanging on. And there's Can Jessica, like, oh my god, I'm gonna have yeah. to marry him in a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> but she held up. We drove the rest of the weekend like that. Yeah, so yeah. It that was, was that, that was a crazy jump. I remember huge. people we sending it off video. It was like two, what, what the number he said? It was like two, I forget. 247? Yeah, 247. We walked off. I didn't believe it the first time. I had to walk it off twice. I'm like, there's no way that I just did that on accident. <laughs> By the way, we're, and the that car was drove at, out of there. And it drove out of there, yeah. yeah. That was in Glamis or Buttercup or? Uh, Glamis. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a, crazy. Right by Sunset. I saw it the other day. We just went for Camp Razor, so yeah. it would be one year I did that. One yeah, year ago I the did that. famous dune jump. Yeah, yeah, we saw it, and I was like, "Oh." Well, I mean, that. everyone when this video came out, everyone was like, "Oh, that's photoshopped," or "That's no, photoshopped," yeah. or "That that's not." That's there was not so many different, better angles. I actually like had uh, my buddy Paul out there that usually films for me. Like, we had so much cool stuff we could have filmed this with, and it was <laughs> my fiance on her iPhone that <laughs> yeah. just so happened to video yeah. it from like the top view to where yeah, you know, I was just like, "Thank God we got that on video." Exactly. Yeah, that was that was a hell of a launch. That was crazy. Yeah. I, I, that 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 would that speaks volumes to the shocks too because you still had fun all weekend with it. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, 
took it and kept going. A L- little bit of physical therapy and you are in your <laughs> Exactly. <morning. laughs> yeah. Small back adjustment and yeah. you're back on the chiropractor road. after yeah. that. God, I wonder how high you were at. Oh, the dude, it was, it was high. <laughs> yeah. I've well, paused it many times and tried to like be like, okay, that's one card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's about 30 feet, 40 feet. Yeah. That was a gnarly yeah. jump. And you're a professional at calculated jumps, right? Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> do that for a living, yeah. so of course. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, glad I didn't have anybody in the car. Cause yeah, <laughs> I didn't probably would have had to replace that seat. Yeah, yeah, been, yeah exactly. Been bad. So crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I when that thing aired, I was like, no way. Yeah, I think it's crazy. <laughs> well, uh, did anybody else have anything they wanted to grill Doug on before we turn it in for today? Garrett had a question if my brother's going to start driving. He usually rides with me, um, and uh, he does good. You know, he's a He's an all right co-driver, but uh, he's, uh, you know, he's done the short course stuff as well. And, and I don't know really what we're doing with short course next year in general. Um, we might do maybe something, maybe nothing. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Desert's kind of taken off and and, uh, and there's a possibility that he's maybe going to get a pro R built and maybe start racing it. So is okay. he older or younger? Younger. Oh, OK. Yeah, when, are we gonna see, when are we going to see you two in a trophy truck? When you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when somebody comes, where's that Indonesian guy? Maybe, maybe yeah, we exactly. keep, maybe we keep doing good enough in the <laughs> UTV, and somebody wants us to drive there. So yeah, that would be, exactly. That would be optimal. But. Talk to your Indonesian homeboy. Yep, yeah. right. I know. <laughs> you can get him hooked, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Ride. If he's in one a helicopter ride. getting to watch, yeah. Maybe drive every once in a while. He might be in. Yeah. We just gotta line that up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we thank you so much for stopping by today. I mean, we know you're super busy. It's a busy time of year. It's the holidays, and you just, you're just you still probably recovering from getting beat to death in Baja. But thanks, really, for taking time out and come spend time on our show. And uh, we appreciate you more than we can say with words. Um, anybody else have anything to say before we finish no, up? Man, thanks for everything. Thanks for all your support. Thanks yeah. for uh, – I mean, the support just doesn't come from us. You, you give us a ton of support on the um, – on our product and we we appreciate it yeah thank you guys i appreciate it and give me the opportunity to uh help r&d this new black hawk and yeah. can't wait for it you're to... the biggest part of it <laughs> yep. yeah i know it's on the shelves for canams and stuff like that but pro r's hopefully yeah. soon it's yeah. coming yep um and people you will not be uh disappointed and anybody have questions or comments uh, leave it down below as always and we'll get either get the questions answered for you or we'll get uh, get you set up with a Anything you need as far as answers to questions or comments. Right on. All right. Thanks, guys. Doug's Thanks again. To, Doug's off to take a Percocet from Exactly. <laughs> we'll see you all next time on Shock Talk. Thank you.